Hi folks, today we're going to install Android 15. It works on Raspberry Pi 500, Raspberry Pi 5 and Raspberry Pi Compute Module 5, including Raspberry Pi 5 with 16 GB of RAM, which also has a new system and chip. We are going to install a free version, though it's not as easy as installing Android Amteria version from Raspberry Pi OS Imager that has add-on modules that you have to pay for. You can download either Classics Android 15 version or the one that is specially adapted for Android TVs. My Android of choice is Constacank. There are two versions, AOSP 15 with less add-ons and it's also open source and Lineage 22 version which has some useful add-ons. However, AOSP version is getting more advanced and uh, in this case uh, you might like it as well so you can choose either of them installing android itself is therefore relatively easy you download the image and you use raspberry pi imager to copy the image from a zip file to the sd card which you want to use there are two versions of android zip file the one without ota ending in the file name and the one with it. the first one is meant for initial installation and the second one is meant for upgrading so if you want to upgrade the existing installation then just reboot it in recovery mode and install ota zip file over the existing installation it is important to know that android is not just the operating system because you can take the operating system image you can install it to any SD card or another data drive and you can run Android from it. But if you are lacking Google Apps, then uh, it would be very hard for you to install most of the applications because the best ones are actually only available through Google Store. However, Google has lately upgraded Play Store security and you can only run your Google Play Store if your Google Services Framework ID is registered. This is possible in two ways. If you buy, for example, a new smartphone, its Google Services Framework ID is already registered, but Raspberry Pi 5 has no such registration. So you have to do it by yourself as if you were a developer of a new unique Android device. You can access your Google Services Framework ID through an ADB connection, which is usually accessible through a USB port. This is what smartphones have. Raspberry Pi 5, however, also has Ethernet port and you can also use it in Android 15 for an ADB connection. So it's equivalent to a USB port. You can also use ADB through a Wi-Fi connection. There's also a third option. This is a special application that you have to install and it enables you to read your Google Services Framework ID. But unfortunately, it is only available until you actually enter your credentials for your Google account. Afterwards, you will not be able to read your Google Services Framework ID. So make sure to copy the Google Services Framework number or you will have to enforce to use an ADB connection afterwards. Though there are many such applications available from the internet in APK files, many are not compatible with Raspberry Pi 5 or the version of Android that we are about to install. I've used device info version 1.8, which you can find in RU OTDR device info APK application file, which is available from APK Pure or another internet file server, which you can find using Google search or similar search services. There is also version 1.9 that I believe works as well. You can use Raspberry Pi OS for downloading Google Apps as well as device info APK installation file. Now you need a new SD card or other system drive that you're gonna use for Android 15 installation. Use Raspberry Pi Imager to copy consta kang image file to the Android drive. I've used a new 64 gigabyte SSD card and when I copied the basic consta kng image on it, it turned out that just a small part of the SSD card 
was actually used. And I felt it was necessary to expand system partition as well as user data partition, because they may both run out of space if you are installing a large number of new Android applications. Without expanding them, it would have also been impossible to preload Google Apps installation file. In my case, I opted to expand system partition for about 10 gigabytes and user data partition to occupy the rest of the SSD card. But in order to do so, I had to first make room to expand system partition. So I've moved vendor and user data partitions for 10 gigabytes forward. And later on, I was able to expand system partition and I've also expanded user data partition. Gparted tool is designed to make all the required changes in one go. So when you specify the operations, you just draw some kind of plan of redesigning your drive. And later on, the tool actually makes all the required changes in one go. I succeeded with no problems. Next, I want to use Android 14 as a USB plugin, so I wouldn't have to remove my Raspberry Pi OS SSD card from SSD socket and replace it with Android SSD card. I used Raspi config system application, you must call it with sudo raspi config, to change boot order, to prioritize boot from a USB drive. I went to boot drive and open config.txt file. I've located boot device and changed it to Android USB. If you don't want to have a plugin, you don't have to do this. The next required modification is about a display. If you are using a monitor that supports 1920 by 1080 resolution then you are good to go but if you have an older monitor that maybe supports just 1680 pixels by 1050 pixels then you have to change the resolution in resolution.txt file i rebooted my raspberry pi 5 uh, with my new android 14 drive attached the drive uh, started in uh, normal system mode and I was able to install my device ID application, which I used to read JSF ID. And then I've rebooted my Android 14 again, uh, just to put it in TWRP mode. This is system maintenance mode with a special tool. And uh, I was in this way able to install Google applications. Afterwards, I've restarted my Raspberry Pi again to normal system operation. The Google apps were up and uh, I was able to perform the registration. As you can see, there are a few steps that must be performed. First, uh, you start Play Store and then uh, you would get a notice that uh, Play Store is uh, unable to run because your services frame is not registered. But you have a link for the developers where you can make your registration by entering GSF ID number that uh, you've obtained with your device ID tool and you start the registration procedure. You have to wait about 10 or 15 minutes before Google servers validate your registration and you are able to access Google Play Store. But uh, there are a few tricks that I would also like to share with you because they are important when you are preloading files or if you want to access your Android drive offline, for example, with Raspberry Pi OS. Because Google Chrome or other web browser is not available with Consta KNG version of Android 14 image, uh, you have to download it from Play Store. But until you manage to enable your Play Store operation, the only option is to download APK installation files from the internet. But you are unable to do it because WebView in test mode, which is pre-installed with the original system image, has no download capabilities. So the only option is to preload device ID application APK file to your user data or other partition that is available while Android 14 operates normally. You might also need to make changes to the boot partition files. Sometimes boot partition would not be accessible with Raspberry Pi OS. It would have always be accessible with Windows, 
with classic species. When put partition is not available in Raspberry Pi OS, open a terminal window, browse to media, admin or other username that you are currently using. Create a directory that you're gonna be using to mount your boot partition, for example Android 14 boot, and then use mount command to mount the boot partition. The boot partition has usually to be manually mounted within Raspberry Pi OS. There are also other partitions like user data partition which are only partially locked. So they have certain folders that are not accessible without root access. You can gain root access by opening a terminal window and entering command sudo minus s. So this one would be able to in fact access all the data. So if you go to media, admin and so on and then you go to user data partition and you open media and then you select for example zero which is the internal disk and user disk and you can see that actually all the files are there if you are looking for the contents of downloads or whatever you need videos movies everything is there but you have to browse there and then you have to use cp or copy command to copy these contents under a root authority to another drive what about using android it's very fast it works perfectly you can install probably a number of games i guess there are more than you can install with retro consoles uh, let's say playstation 2 and so on android games at least to me seem more modern better i like them more graphics seems to be better and whatever i've managed to install it seems to work flawlessly but you have to be aware of one thing and this is that if you are using a bad sd card with uh, a lot of problems it might get stuck or whatever it might work slowly it may start slowly so you have many of reasons why android wouldn't work fast because of technical issues so i recommend if you are going to regularly use android or if you are going to use android as your only operating system on raspberry pi 5 that you simply put your android sd card into sd card slot and you use rather your raspberry pi os as a plug-in module it usually has no problem starting from an SD card. For much faster experience you can also use an SSD drive but only if it's not connected through a PCIe switch. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video press like and subscribe buttons. See you in the next video. Bye!